Hello everyone and welcome back to the Miss Great Kings Vanguard channel and today I will be doing just a quick update video maybe I say that it's probably gonna end up being like 30 minutes long but yeah okay it's meant to be a updated deck profile of my Dimension Police deck basically yeah I've okay I've, ever since it got released like in July for my side it's been like three sets ever since then uh AL4 that's one Mini booster and last week just EBO3 which is like ultra rare and I actually feel the need to actually do a quick update deck profile because this deck actually changed a lot over the past few months like over the few releases and I feel the need to do an update because the list actually deviates a lot from my first first few drafts because of how the meta shift was standard like in my locals yep I'll just stop rambling about just explain the deck uh first thing running three four mark uh force markers maybe more than that but just want to draw attention to this force marker that's from psychoalia strife like aichi and kai when they're their kid days you know ran himself and the golden force marker which i gotten from wgp this is not from psychoalia strife this was from wgp itself yeah so running you can run more you're gonna run more here but just for some people who thought i don't play markers in the deck just to show you i do okay uh, for starter, let's just go on with it. For starter, is like Goyusha on right. You just draw one. Same thing as always. Like the only starter you can be running is standard. Like I mean, it's pretty good on right. Draw one, so I can't complain about that. Okay, great trees change a little bit. First is the three copies. Okay, four copies of Great Dayusha. Uh, same same as last time we didn't change at all, and the four copies of Dayusha, which is like I don't think I have to explain much on them, which are like staples in deck at this point. Anything that was covered in terms of skill, like during the last deck profile, I won't really go over it, but only for the newcomers. Next is one copy of Silba. One the card that I didn't like at first, I let me explain. I didn't like him at first because often okay, if on a ratio that you're place testing around ten games and you're running one copy of it, then out of that ten games you're riding him onto him like first ride or you have to G assist, like throw him out from hand to G assist to get another great tree. Like around six to seven games or so it's actually really unlucky that's why i didn't run him but maybe it's just me i'm really lucky recently that's why it gives me a reason to actually run one copy and boy i would say he is a very good card especially when you're playing protect clan or i would say the current meta for ebo3 which is like neo nectar without any any counter charge engine angel feather which is like protect clan and their hand like by the time you have like two great that you shall rewrite, you probably have like four protecting hand already. They're like stocking out like crazy. Okay. Uh I'm currently running one of him because he's a very good creep pressure on rear guard, but I wouldn't run more of him because like I said earlier, I have the tendency of riding him too often than I should be. But don't get me wrong, he is still a very good card. That's why I'm still running a one-off. Okay. Next is the four copies of Die Dragon. No difference from previously, uh, still a staple. Like, Dayusha, Great Dayusha, Die Dragon, they are like staples in the deck already. And Die Brave, or Command Order, I'll explain it later. And next is the four copies of Mad Scepter X. Basically, that to for the shield value against, like, decks that actually require, like, playing Kagero, Waterfall, Nouvelle. They are, they are attacking for, like, I don't know how big. Uh, 40, 53, slow, slowly scaling up by every turn. And this is there basically, I mean they're on guard restrict, so basically it's there to help out with guarding. And also to, like okay, I'll show you the trigger lineup later on, and you'll actually see why I'm running the four copies of Mass After X. It's make up of like, the lack of shield value, I would say. Next is three copies of Miracle QT. Okay, on release, I would say, I mean you saw my deck before, I actually was like, in love with this card. Not really in love, but then, yeah. I actually really like this card at first, for some reason, I don't know why. After like, I don't know how many drafts, I suddenly dropped her from the deck. I don't know why. She was like so good. Like, it's basically on attack. On attack. When your attack hits a Vanguard, and your Vanguard power is 30k or more, he, you can get to draw one. It is such a good advantage game you are playing with your opponent. Like, you run swing. The moment they just drop a 5k shield guard, you just won by one turn of One form of advantage. They are minusing one to stop you from plusing one. I stopped running this for a reason. I don't know why. Like, because I maybe it's because I was testing like other stuff like Cosmo Big, like pumping up Grander, which I dropped from that from as you can see or Miracle Dandy, but okay, I 
chose not to opt for the Miracle Dandy for the final grade 2 slot is because one, it is a 9k shoe value. Not shoe value, 9k base power, which trust me on this, you do not want to ride him as your first ride against Excel decks. Riding him against Excel deck and you are going first, which by right should be in your favor if you take first grade 2 ride, I guess. But if you are riding a 9k body, they are probably just, let's put an example Aqua Force. They are probably just gonna ride the Argos, call out the Tide Assaults, Assault Swings, Soul Blast 1, we stand, swing again, Argos Swings, and basically you'll be getting hit like 3 to 4 times during that turn when, like, without any apparent drawback by the Aqua Force player because they don't have the Soul Blast, they don't have the call down booster, which I don't really like that idea. But it's fine if you actually enjoy that card. I personally do like that card myself. I ran it before but putting in miracle qt actually puts in a little bit it just sprinkles a bit of pressure during your turn i would say and a bit of advantage game like i mentioned next four copies of die brave still an important staple in the deck like the the four of these they are like staple in the deck already and next is die mariner uh, i was running a three off previously but now popping up to four because of angel feather angel feather and ott which is like the more the most threatening deck for this deck, I would actually say they are the more annoying one to deal with. Marina actually puts in a lot of basically so plus one, even protect, they're gonna throw one more card together with it. Which in the sense you are minusing the hand by one, I would say, for a Vanguard deck. Next is the four copies of Commander Laurel, best card in that deck. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I mean yeah, he is the best card of deck. Best card in the deck. Uh counter plus one, you rest I need I think okay, I think you know his skill already. It's like counter plus one, rest four of your need you for all your units, you choose one another a unit of you, you get double the power and plus one crit. Okay. Uh one thing I enjoy doing a lot with this deck, which is why I would spoiler alert the trigger I'm running is like eight crits, is because you can play the play the mind game which is whereby you can pump your Vanguard up to like three crits swing pressure, then do they want to guard? If they don't, they're just gonna die by crit stacking or something. Which is not a very good way of winning, but then yeah, it is practical, I would say. Okay. Running at, okay, I chose drop. Okay, as compared to my last deck profile, which is like I have Die Lander, and over the past few, past few games that you've seen me playing, there was Die Tiger. Okay, Die Tiger was awesome, I would say. It was good, but let me explain it. For the current EBO3 release, right, majority of their skills are on place. Like for Angel Feather, it's on place. Like the whole, the whole set itself, 90% of their skill base like on place, unless it's like uh, hospi the hospital tower or something from the Angel Feather. Like, the value of that insult for that one retired value actually dropped a lot. Like, even if you're playing against OTT, you don't even get to retire the Promised Daughter. You're playing against Grand Blue, you retire, it's not gonna do you anything. Which is why I chose to drop that from deck. And for the case of Dylander, the intercept, I would say, as from my, I think I explained it before, basically the one intercept is not that valuable, like you are playing against Aqua, Aqua Force, they are not going to intercept their important pieces, Neo Nectar, tokens are not going to have intercept, they are like great zeros. That's why I'm choosing opting for for, for, for the four copies. Final grade one spot, and no, this is not Dylander, I will emphasize, this is something called uh, Miracle Pretty. Okay, uh, newcomer to that, I think you've seen it in my matches that he actually won me a few games already. Basically on place, you can select, okay you have 5 damage, you can select 5 units and they get plus 5k power. So as you've seen, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, whatever, like during my games. Okay, what you can do with this is like after your first grade Darisha rewrite and you want to go into another one without need, without the need of Laura to bail you out or costing a soul for their skill to bail out for the minimum 46k threshold with the boost with by 8k power. You can always offer him, coin mark. Give be give herself five thousand power and you have put him behind the vanguard. And you can give your other two units on these two lane plus five k power each, which is like raise the power by like ten k for each lane. Which actually very very fun to play, I would say. But I'm not running more of it is because as mentioned, you need five damage to like to use the skill. Which by the time you have five damage, you're already in a very dangerous position. So on by the time you coin, you should probably be going for game by then already. If not, you are probably dead by the next turn. Next is the fork. Okay. Trigger lineup, which I would say is very different, I would say. Okay, I'm opting for a total of 4 die battles and 4 
Justice Cobalt basically running a total of 8 crits. Now, why 8 crit you ask? Um, one reason is running more draws, it actually... Okay, whenever my Vanguard swings for like 2 or 3 crits, Okay, the moment your opponent sees a penguin soldier, the I they, the chances of them wanting to guard your vanguard is like slightly lower. They're probably just gonna no guard thinking that you're playing a high draw count and probably not gonna crit psychic to win. That's why I'm opting for for eight crits in total. And for law oh yeah. Because of lack of shield value, I uh, not shield value, the number of cards you have in your hand or something, I have Mass after X, which is like a tank issue, which makes up for it already. Oh yeah, that's why running... I'm opting for the AQ because I want... This, I will say this deck is actually pretty high roll, I will say myself. If you don't see your pieces, you are actually in a lot of trouble, I will say. But you have Die Brave to accelerate it for you. And even if you miss right into Great Dairisha, you have other things in the deck to bail, bail you out of it, like Commander Laurel himself. That and the currently the crits basically you can just go for I don't know if you're able to crit like opponent for win closing out the game even earlier even better so running a total of eight crits next is the for draw PG I don't think I'll explain much and the four heals oh yeah so that's about it for a quick update video for my DP deck profile if you actually enjoyed it just leave a like oh yeah I think some people actually requested for Angel Fighter deck profile which I'll get out very soon. Like, I mean, I'll get a friend of mine to do it for me, the one that sponsored the box opening. So, if you enjoyed it, just leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.